All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Dhamma greetings to all available uh, bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and uh, Dhamma friends who are here on a Zoom platform and also to our friends who are watching uh, live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so let us uh, begin our session by paying respect and homage to the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Let us recite Namo Tassa three times together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa I pay my respect and homage uh, to him, the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened Buddha. Okay, so I would like to uh, welcome all of you to our uh, bi-weekly sutra discussion and uh, sorry for uh, uh, not being able to start this program right on time due to uh, technical difficulties but I'm very grateful uh, to many for being able to uh, uh, figure out how to uh, broadcast this live on Facebook and YouTube uh, so today, um, I'm very happy to have uh, all of you for this bi-weekly discussion. Um, so I would like to introduce all our uh, monks and nuns to our audience. So today we have Venerable Ananda. Uh, he's joining the discussion from uh, Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. Then we have Venerable uh, Digale Somawangsha. He is joining the discussion from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, then we have Venerable Bhante Jayasara. He is joining the discussion this time from New Jersey. <laughs> no, Colorado Buddhist Vihara. Oh, In Colorado Denver. Buddhist Vihara. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. And and then we have Venerable Trudell, he's joining the discussion from Florida, United States. Then we have Venerable uh, Shanta Sobana, he's joining the discussion from Los Angeles, United States. Then we have uh, Venerable Kusala, he's joining the discussion from Boston, United States. Uh, then we have Venerable Kamala Suri, uh, he's joining the discussion from Minnesota, United States. And we have Venerable Bhante Kottavya Nanda. He is joining the discussion from Long Island, uh, New York, United States. And after a long time, we see Venerable Aya Sobana. <laughs> she is joining the discussion uh, from California. Very happy to see you after a long time. And who else is here? Uh, Bhante uh, Sankicha. I can't see him, but he's here. His video is not on. He's joining the discussion from Detroit, United States. Uh, so I would like to give a warm welcome to our uh, venerable uh, monks and nuns, and also to our Dhamma friends who are here on Zoom platform. And uh, whoever is watching on Facebook and YouTube live, uh, please welcome to this discussion. And uh, today, we are going to uh, discuss uh, another uh, interesting uh, sutra uh, from the Sanyutta Nikaya, and uh, the title of the today's discussion is Fire Simile and Seven Factors of Awakening, When to Cultivate and When to Not Cultivate. This is based on Agisutta, and uh, I would like to invite Venerable Ananda uh, to give us a, a summary of this sutta. And before that, I have a very humble request from all of you and all our friends uh, who are watching on Facebook and YouTube. 
uh, please feel free to share this program on your timeline uh, for the spiritual benefit of your family members, friends, and colleagues. So, Venerable Ananda. Greetings, Bhante, Bikkus, Bikkunis, and uh, Dhamma friends. So, today our discussion is around Agni Sutta, which appears in the linked discourse, the Sangyata Nikaya, under the Bodhjanga Vagga. Now, the key emphasis given uh, today is the seven factors of awakening, or called the Sati Sam Bodhjanga. So, there are seven factors. Bodhjanga could be even uh, separated to Bodhi Anga, which means uh, uh, factors which uh, contribute towards the enlightenment, uh, Bodhi Anga. And uh, this Agni Sutta is actually a continuation of the previous Sutta, which appears right on top of Agni Sutta, which is called the Pariyaya Sutta. And uh, we find this idea of uh, uh, five hindrances, Panchanivarana and Satta Bodhjanga, in many places. So we find it in uh, sutras like Satipattana Sutta, where it goes into detail about the five hindrances and uh, Anivarana Sutta in the same Samyutta Nikaya, which discusses in detail uh, both these things together, five hindrances and uh, seven factors of awakening. In other words, in Pali, the Panchanivarana and uh, Sat Sam uh, Sambodhjanga. So before we um, get into the details of the sutta, I would like to share my screen. That is because I would uh, like to show this in a more visual format. I'm a very visual person and uh, some of uh, you might not be as fluent as the monks when it comes to Pali language. So I just wanted to show you this. So these two concepts, the five hindrances and the uh, seven factors of awakening, they appear all the time. And I'm also going to take you to the jhana or the dhyana, uh, the four stages of dhyana after this. So we have uh, five hindrances, kamachanda, vyapada, tinamidda, uddacha, kukucha, vichikicha, which means the sensory desire, desire you gain through the five senses, etc. Vyapada, ill will, hatred, animosity, etc. Slot and topper, which could occur in your body, which could occur in your mind. Uddacha kukucha, the restlessness and worry. We covered this in a previous uh, day also, I remember explaining this. Vichikicha, the doubt, uh, the self-doubt, doubt about uh, uh, Buddha Dhamma Sangha. So that, those are the five hindrances. Then we have uh, the seven factors of Satta Bodhjanga. Now this Bodhjanga, very interestingly, is divided into three parts. You would see that there's a black one, which is Sati. Then there's the blue color uh, group and the red color group. So Dhamma Vichaya, Biriya, Preeti Sambodjanga. Uh, Dhamma Vichaya being the investigation about Dhamma. Biriya being uh, energy or determination. Preeti, joy or rapture. Uh, so those belong to one category, sort of. And then we have Pasaddi, Samadhi and Upeka Sambodjanga. Pasaddi means the relaxation or tranquility. Samadhi, concentration, grossly translated. Upeka, the equanimity. And we find Sati, uh, the beginning of that, in the, the, the forerunner of that again, Sati Sambodjanga. So we find uh, the seven factors of enlightenment and the five hindrances. But the next uh, slide, I want you to take you to, to a uh, jhana because every time we speak about uh, the previous ones, five hindrances, seven factors, we also find very similar words. So going to the first one, the first jhana, secluded from pleasure and uh, when you get into that wholesome state you come across this rupture and pleasure which appears here again the rupture and pleasure preeti sambodjanga so i just wanted to show the similarity between the two words or the two states and in the second jhana we find uh, with the subsidize, subsiding of the thought and examination vitakka vichara vupasama there's a second jhana where there's internal placidity unification of mind and uh, it's, it still has rupture and pleasure born out of concentration without thought and examination. So we find the words abhitakas avichara or the word of concentration here. Again, we find a similarity uh, here at samadhi. Uh, I'm not saying second jhana is samadhi, but I'm saying that there are elements that uh, these jhanas have with the previous uh, seven factors. And then in the third jhana, we find the fading away of the rupture and when the rupture fades away, we are ended up with equanimous, mindful, uh, and happiness. So 
Um, this is the stage that we are left in the third jhana. And the fourth jhana, we find abandoning of the pleasure and pain. You find uh, passing away of joy and sadness and there's equanimity. So the words equanimity, concentration, rupture, pleasure is very much associated with the four jhanas. So that's what I wanted to first show you. And then uh, let's go to the uh, sutta. So in this sutta, it, uh, it occurs... Uh, with a set of a group of ascetics. So the monks went to the park of the wanderers of the other sects on arrival. They exchanged courteous greetings with the wanderers of the sect. So basically it's a beautiful uh, suggestion that uh, these monks, before they do the bhiksha, they go to a, uh, a, a park where a whole bunch of other ascetics are there, other spiritual uh, monks are there. And now it's a beautiful message that uh, we as Buddhist monks, especially that we can get uh, Bhante Sarapala and most of the monks here, including myself, we are a lot involved with interfaith activity and interfaith dialogue especially. Uh, activity is nice, but then especially interfaith dialogue. Whenever I uh, do an interfaith dialogue or when I go to one of the dialogues, I find that there's a lot that we could learn from Sikhism, from Jainism, from Christianity, and there's a lot that we can share. Now, the other day I was at uh, one of the iftar dinners and the whole idea of, uh, was around the iftar fasting. So I was talking about the fasting which is available in Buddhism in the Ahara Vagga, Kabalinkara Ahara, uh, Manosanchetara Ahara, Passa Ahara, Vinyana Ahara. So there are similarities, there are differences, but I think conversing and getting an idea uh, gives us a lot of learning as uh, people, in, as people who are driven in the path of spirituality. So with that, the idea goes around uh, the concepts of Pancha Nivarana, five hindrances and uh, seven factors of uh, enlightenment are discussed among these spiritual Buddhist monks and the other, um, other uh, group of uh, ascetics. Now, the other group of ascetics says we also have the same uh, idea in our, in our uh, discourse or in our uh, teaching, the five uh, hindrances and uh, seven factors but uh, the question is what is the difference between what we have and what you have now that's a beautiful question comparing and contrasting uh, in order to uh, learn it further now it also brings my mind uh, when i uh, was passing through north india especially the tibetan monks they have this beautiful practice where the tibetan samaneras are taught uh, buddhist debate now it's a beautiful practice where they clap, one is standing, the other one is seated, and they do debate. It almost looks like a fight, but uh, the very idea of Buddhist debate is not to fight, not to resort to violence, not to get into argument, but to together find the truth. And that's a beautiful uh, idea, but it also gets your mind very sharpened on logic, on how to ask a question, how to respond to a question. Um, so many uh, ways of doing the proper Buddhist debate, uh, especially stemming from people, uh, from uh, philosophers like Nagarjuna, Dharmakirti. So now having said that, it reminds me uh, that setting, probably like the, what we see in the modern day India in Dharmashala or in the Rishikesh where the ascetics are uh, having these uh, spiritual, uh, very um, uh, friendly debates to figure out the Dhamma. So then uh, this same question uh, uh, goes to Buddha and then uh, Buddha gives an uh, explanation to that. So if you look at the previous Pariyaya Sutta, which appears before the Agni Sutta, Buddha explains the five hindrances in 10 ways, uh, seven factors in 14 ways. So that's the first discussion. What difference, what distinction, what uh, distinguishing factor is there here between Gautama, the contemplative, and us. So that's the question asked. And uh, so then uh, the particular question here is abandoning the five hindrances, the corruptions of awareness and weakened discernment, develop the seven factors of awakening, abandoning of the five hindrances, and uh, developing the seven factors of awakening are the question here, or is the, dis uh, the point of uh, discussion here, or the theme here, uh, everyone seems to be having it. The question is, uh, what is the difference between the uh, Gautama, the contemplatives, and the rest of the other ascetics? So then uh, Buddha gives an explain explanation. Uh, on many occasions, when the mind is sluggish, which of the factors of awakening is that the wrong time to develop? 
which of the factors of awakening is the right time to develop? On any occasion, when the mind is sluggish, which of the factors of awakening is the wrong time to develop? Which of the factors of awakening is the right time to develop? So basically the answer revolves around mind being in two, two states, the sluggish states, state and the restless state. So sluggish being, uh, it's uh, sluggish, it's almost frozen. The restless means it's agitated. So we are talking about two different uh, extremes. And uh, Buddha says that uh, uh, there are things that you should use at a particular stage, which might be bad on another stage. And it also gives another beautiful uh, approach to Buddhism or to Manjima Patipada, that there is no right answer. The answer is dependent on the situation. Um, if the water is, uh, if we want a lukewarm water, if the water is cold, we need to put hot water, the boiling water. But if our water is boiling, we need to put cold water to make it lukewarm. So uh, instead of giving a one right answer, it gives us a situational answer to balance ourselves. And again, I'm going to the assimilies, it, it's beautifully explained, so let me go to that. So the first part is that uh, when the mind is sluggish, leenam chittam hopi, uh, the mind is uh, shrunk, shy or reserved, uh, sluggish. Uh, in, in a situation like that, now monks, on any occasion when the mind is sluggish, that is wrong time to develop, calm as a factor of awakening, concentration as a factor of awakening, and equanimity as a factor of awakening. Passaddi, samadhi, upeka. There are three which are not the best time to have or to develop when the mind is sluggish uh, or in Pali, Leena Chittang Hopi. That's so the wrong time to develop calm as a... Sorry. Okay. So, um, yeah, we have a week. Right. So, and the example given, this is a beautiful example also. Uh, before I explain the example, let me quickly share my um, screen again about uh, the calm mind or the sluggish mind. Asati, Samadhi and Upeka, relaxation, tranquility, concentration and equanimity are not the best to uh, develop when the mind is sluggish or calm. Yeah. And of course, the opposite is here, when the mind is agitated, Piti, Viriya, Dhamma, Vijaya are not the best. But uh, let's uh, look at the first one here. Passaddi, Samadhi and Nupeka are not the best uh, to be developed out of the seven factors when the mind is in a state of sluggishness. Um, so the example given is uh, beautiful too. Now we have uh, meditation here at uh, our temple and during winter we uh, make a fire. And our Bhante Susila is the expert on uh, fire making, so he knows how to make the fire properly. So, uh, <laughs> okay. when, you, know. when you make a fire, only you get to know how to lit a fire in the middle of the winter with, with a little bit of uh, uh, things, you know, with a little bit of uh, 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 material. So, the example given is that suppose that you are making a fire. Uh, just as if a man wanting to make a small fire, fire blaze up, uh, were to place wet grass in it, wet cow dung, wet sticks, were to give it a spray of water and smother uh, it with dust, is it possible that he would make the small fire blaze up? Now, that's a really beautiful example. I think we can discuss about that example in many ways. Now, all the material, in order to, uh, when you go to science, in order for a fire to start, you need oxygen, you need something to be burned, and you need the correct uh, temperature. But uh, all these things that uh, we were talking about, wet grass, cow dung, cow dung is a, is a good uh, uh, fire propellant. Uh, it can uh, burn really well. But uh, even, even though it's the best thing, if it's given at the wrong time, it will put out the fire. So that's a really beautiful meaning. Although all these grass, uh, cow dung, they are going to help the fire at one stage, if you introduce it to the fire when the fire is really small, it will, will not uh, grow. It will actually work on the opposite way. So that's the first uh, um, uh, simile or the example Buddha gives. Uh, that the right time to develop, um, that is the, so this is the wrong time to develop Passaddi, Samadhi, Upeka, calm, concentration and equanimity as factors of awakening, but it's the right time to develop analysis of qualities as a factor of awakening, 
persistence, rupture, um, uh, Dhamma Vichaya, Virya, and the Piti Sambodjanka. So these are the right time to have those three, but the wrong time to have Asadi Samadhi and Upekra. Um, like wanting to make a small fire blaze up, were to place dry grass in it, dry cow dung, and dry uh, sticks. So again, the, the example, uh, the assembly is around the fire, how to make a fire. So if you have tried to make a fire, it really makes sense again. Uh, so that's the first part. The second part is that uh, when the mind is restless, when the mind is agitated, when the mind is wanting, uh, how do we uh, go around that? On any occasion when the mind is restless, that is the wrong time to develop analysis, a wrong time to develop persistence and rupture. Wrong, basically, wrong time to develop Dhammavichaya, Virya and Preeti. Just as if a man wanting to put out a large fire, were to place dry grass in it, dry cow dung, dry sticks, were to blow on it with his mouth and not smother it with dust. Is it, is it possible that he would put it out? So it works the opposite way now. If you want to put it out, you're not supposed to put dry uh, grass, dry cow dung and dry sticks on it. You're supposed to do the opposite. That is the right time to develop calm as a factor, concentration as a factor and equanimity, equanimity as a factor of awakening. Just as if a man wanting to put out a large fire were to place wet grass in it, wet cow dung, wet sticks, uh, were to give it a spray of four times, mother it with dust. So uh, it's a beautiful example that you should use any tool at the appropriate time. Now, uh, Dhamma or the, the discourse of Buddha is, is like a medicine. But if you take uh, Advil when you don't have a headache, that's going to be bad on your kidney. So it's using the right thing at the right time. So going back to our um, uh, seven factors again, you will see that when the mind is sluggish, we, you, we don't use Pasadhi, Samadhi and Nopeka, but we develop Dhamma, Vichya, Virya and Preeti. But when the mind is agitated, we reverse it, we uh, use it to calm down, we use Pasadhi, Samadhi and Nopeka to calm down, but we do not uh, go into Dhamma, Vichya, Virya and Preeti. But regardless of whatever we do, Sati or mindfulness remain throughout the entire process. Yeah. As Mindfulness, I tell you, that uh, serves every purpose. So this is the uh, rough idea of uh, uh, the seven factors of awakening. Again, uh, to uh, cover it, it, it to, to properly understand, I think the best is to read the first sutta, uh, the Pariyaya Sutta, because that gives the context uh, of what happens. And then we have five hindrances, seven factors uh, connected to the four states of jhana. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Venerable Ananda, for taking us through this uh, uh, sutra and also uh, making a lot of effort into preparing this uh, PowerPoint presentation for, for, for the convenience of our audience. And of course, uh, we monks and nuns uh, know about the five hindrances and the, and the seven factors of awakening, but for the lay people, Sometimes it may be confusing. So uh, with this uh, proper presentation, uh, you made it very convenient for them. So I'm very uh, happy for that and thank you so much. And also we have Venerable uh, Sudamananda joining the discussion from Long Island, right? You in New York and and, uh, and, and Bante Sankicha is here. So I would like to welcome both of you. And uh, uh, I, I think uh, there's a, a very interesting point to highlight. And of course, uh, uh, interfaith dialogue. I think, uh, as you know, even our monks and nuns in, 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 in the United States uh, are heavily involved with uh, interfaith dialogues. I know uh, for sure the Verba Shantasobana is very active in Los Angeles. And, and here in Canada, uh, Myself and Venerable Ananda are very active. We are, we are participating in a lot of uh, interfaith dialogues. And I know in, uh, sometimes I have seen Bhante Kusala, Bhante Sankicha uh, getting involved with the interfaith dialogues. I think this kind of uh, conversation, friendly conversation took place even during the time of the Buddha. Buddha himself uh, went to those uh, uh, places of worship and had friendly greetings and and discussions and exchange ideas. 
And even here, the Buddha's disciples went to some other ascetics and having this discussion, and they asked this question, we, uh, your teacher te uh, talks about the, as I abandoned the five hindrances and cultivate the seven factors of enlightenment. And uh, we also do the same thing. Now, uh, uh, I don't know which group of ascetics this is referring to, uh, Bhante Kamalasiri, do you have any idea about, could it be the uh, Nigandanatha Buddhas or, or some other? Do you have any clue? Like they also talk about the same uh, thing. They are Paribrajakas. They are Paribrajakas. Okay, yeah. wanderers. Parib yes. But the, the English translation is wanderers. <laughs> but yeah. the Paribrajaka is very interesting group in uh, the, uh, India those days. Because yeah. They were uh, mostly similar to uh, the Buddhist monks. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, they are not the Jain Nigantas. Uh, they were a group of, they are the people who between Buddhist monk and Jain, uh, Jainist monks, they, uh -huh. they were between that. Okay. Uh, otherwise, the mostly Buddha has spent uh, several times with, with them. Mm -hmm. And so Pilotika also Paribrajaka. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they, he was so friendly to the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is interesting group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, these are uh, uh, like Shramana group, aren't they? Yeah, like... kind of Shramana. And their teachings also, we can't find the individual uh, separate teaching, original teaching from them, but from the sutras, uh -huh. uh, their teaching is mostly similar to the Buddhist teaching. Here also we can see that they are talking about uh, Bhujangas, the other uh, hindrance and other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, I have some personal idea about that, but I don't want to talk it about the, uh, in the publicly. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> For the now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later on, by the end of the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, no. <laughs> So uh, here, here is just a simple question uh, uh, for all of you. Now, what are we uh, learning uh, from uh, this sutra? What does it uh, tell us? Uh, so I would like to uh, begin with uh, Bhante Jaisara. If you have read this sutra, uh, how do you read this sutra? Yeah. Thank you, Bhante, and uh, good to be with the Mahasangha. Um, this sutta is one of the suttas that I, I I think of when I think about the Buddha gives us a very practical and pragmatic way to practice mm -hmm. right off the bat. It's it's not kind of esoteric. You don't need to know a lot of different, deeper things. The Buddha is saying simply, if your mind is agitated, don't do things that will keep continue to agitate your mind. And and what um, th the timing is so important, right? Because we're not talking about just a mundane thing. We're talking about factors of awakening. And there are times when we should not practice factors of awakening, mm -hmm. right? So it's a very, very interesting sutta in that way <clears throat> that we, we need to be very wise in knowing what medicine to apply to what illness mm -hmm. you know and uh, when when uh, as we in the beginning of our practice it's it's hard to know that but the more we practice and the more we see then mm -hmm. we can understand oh this goes this is the state of my mind this is what i'm going to apply this is what i'm going to do mm -hmm. right? as opposed to uh you know and you realize well are you feeding it or are you starving it mm -hmm. are you making the hindrances worse by doing what you're doing, or are you making them weaker? Mm. So it's a very, very important, beautiful uh, sutta with practical advice that we can apply Wonderful. directly in our practice. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Venerable uh, Jayasara, for pointing out that point. It's, a, a, it's really interesting. It's very practical, very direct message. Now we see uh, uh, two hands raised by two venerable monks, uh, first by Venerable Shantasobana from Los Angeles. What's in your mind, Venerable Shantasobana? 
thank you very much, Venerable Sirs. And uh, actually, when it comes to this sutra, uh, one of the things that we have to, to understand that when it comes to the very fundamental teachings of the Buddha, it all depends on cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And so it is not anything, any even in the mind, there is nothing exists or effect itself independently. So it always a result of something. And uh, so this is this sutra is very important, especially whoever practice meditation. Because mm -hmm. nowadays we see in the world, uh, people always into meditation. But uh, at the same time, they are trying to practice and they are trying to gain result. And maybe they are themselves uh, that uh, abusing their own mind rather than understanding it. So that's why this is very important. And other thing is that uh, when we see the background of the sutra, we can see not only the Buddha's teaching, there are many other people during that time used to talk about these five hindrance. Mm -hmm. but, but the thing is, they didn't have a right way to deal with this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and uh, so this group of monks went out and then came back to the Buddha and had the discussion. So in the Buddha's teaching, we see overall, when we look at the all the sutras, Buddha never gave any answers to someone else questions. It's always whoever dealing with the Buddha in front of that, that uh, Buddha used to have the conversation with that people. So then according to that, we can see, so this group of monks had some kind of difficulties to understand mm -hmm. how this seven mental, the, this, uh, uh, this, uh, seven factors of energy. Yeah, the, the seven factors of this uh, uh, spiritual path, how to deal with and how to tackle these five hindrance using this uh, teachings. So that's why this sutra is very important, whoever even still nowadays, whoever practice this. Actually, basically, in the in day-to-day -day life, uh, as ordinary people, we have certain kind of understanding about dealing with this outside world. Mm -hmm. As example, people uh, take medication, uh, multivitamins. So the most of time we see that uh, uh, vitamin C and iron, it's always go together. It's kind of like a combination work well together. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, calcium and magnesium, they go together. But we never take D vitamin with the, the, the magnesium. So it's not going to work together. Mm -hmm. So same like uh, sometimes that uh, vitamin E O K we never take with any uh, blood thinner medicine because it's not going to work together. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to food, so sometimes if it is hard to digest, we take it with coconut milk or coconut. So it helps to digest so we have this common sense to use in this conventional world. The same principle here, it used to the mind. It is very important to know that uh, when it comes to this spiritual practice, we have to deal with our own mind without getting help from anybody from outside. Mm. And when we go into the deeper into that when we have this introspection when we go to the deeper into our mind our mind need to be more strong and clear mm. because seeing the truth itself within ourselves is not easy mm. so even just sometimes you know we we all have this physical body and but uh, how about when we if there are very few people can see inside the body sometimes mm. <laughs> they 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 don't have the strength or the the courage to look into it. Yeah. <laughs> so same like when it comes to the mind, we have to have some kind of strength and ability and the, the certain kind of wisdom to seeing ourselves. So this sutra giving that skill. And the other thing is most of the time what we see when people come to practice meditation, they want to get result. Mm. Sometimes they try overnight and maybe when they go through certain kind of result, and they start to imagine that and try to achieve it or maybe they read books 
they listen to others and maybe they want to follow the same path and get the same experience like what other people went through. But in, in meditation, you can't have that kind of things. Mm. So you have to be always mindful to see how the very to see the very condition of the mind. Mm. And according to the condition of the mind, if you are capable to navigate that, you can get the result according to in that environment. Mm. So that is a very basic principle that whoever practice meditation need to understand not to abuse the mind too much and at the same time when it come to dealing with the thoughts the one of the major important part the most of time we have our self-centered mind and it's kind of like I, I practice meditation. I do myself meditation. It's kind of like our egocentric, self-centered mind try to overcome, overtake our own practice. So it's not, it not going to work. So that's why here, when it comes to thoughts as an antidote, we have to use this certain kind of thought patterns, mm. not our own ideas. Mm. Because the very reason as ordinary people, we all have one the one quality in Pali. It called arati. Mm. So the arati means it has a very uh, the wider mean. The arati means the the reasoning to resistance. So as example, when if we want to practice meditation, oh, I come with many reasons. Oh, I don't want to do this time. Oh, it is raining. Oh, it is too far to go. Oh, this time is not the the right time. So like that, we are, we have this arati. So that is where all the mental that uh, formations gather. Mm. So dealing with that and get out of this arati, we need to have some kind of energy. So to have that energy, but the very first quality we have to understand uh, out of this, uh, this all qualities, the mindfulness is the very key point always to see Mm. the very nature of our mind or the condition of our mind. So if anybody can understand that and become honest to themselves and recognize the very nature of the mind, that is where the beginning start when come to this spiritual growth. Mm. Because most of time we can't, we don't see our own mind. We trying to reasoning our mind. So that is two different ways. Seeing yeah. the mind and reasoning mind two different ways. We reasoning mind most of time come with our egocentric self-centered mind or sometimes with our own ignorance. Mm -hmm. So that's why the mindfulness here in the seven practice of enlightenment, this the mindfulness work each and every place. If you keep the mindfulness as the major quality and look into the mind, and see the condition of the mind and that person capable to most of time get the good result out of the practice. So during the Buddha's time, there was a monk called Sona and he had so much strength and the courage and the, and he was so into practice meditation and he, he used to look into other monks and see most of monks practice meditation and gain result. And he... He was so passionate regarding that and he started to practice. And he practiced, practiced, practiced and what happened? He started to overdoing his practice. And because of that, he got tired. And then by the time he, he himself got tired and he started to give up the path and he thought, this is not going to work for me. So Buddha saw that what is happening in his mind. And then in that point, the Buddha appeared and uh, that gave some advice and told him to how to practice. And other is Venerable Moggallan. Even before he attained to the enlightenment, and he, he, he went through very hard time while he practiced meditation. And he was falling to sleep, got tired, and many times he was kind of like a give up practicing meditation. But little by little, little by little, applying the, recognizing the thoughts and applying the, the different kind of thoughts methods or the changing the condition of the mind manually rather than go kind of like autopilot manually step by step according to that condition of the mind 
and practicing get out of that uh, the situation. So it is important then whoever practice meditation don't look uh, kind of like uh, overnight the the result. So this and keep just practice and at the same time whoever go through experience don't try to look for it or repeat it. Yeah. Because it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's being mindful of this, uh, these uh, uh, factors is also very important, isn't it? Like, you know, the uh, if, if you're not being mindful of the instructions, you can't uh, fix the mind. Yes. And most of the time, what happened to the, 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 the newcomers, sometimes when they start to practice meditation, maybe first they feel they feel so relaxed and comfortable. And the very next day, think they think about that yesterday that they had some experience and they start to imagine about it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen, me. So then they start to keep trying hard, and then they get tired. Yeah, that's why this is a gradual practice and a step by step. They need to go and at the same time need to be humble. The most important thing is seeing the mind itself and manually adjust it according to the necessary environment. Yeah, right. Beautiful explanation. Thank you so much, Verbo Shanta Sobana. Uh, actually, it really uh, makes much sense. And if, if people can understand this, they can really benefit from this practice. Uh, next, we see uh, Venerable uh, Bhante Sankicha from uh, Detroit, United States. What's in your mind, Venerable uh, Sankicha? Yes, Bhante, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Greetings and respect to all the Bhantes. And, uh, By the way, it's so uh, nice to see you after a long time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Yes, Bhante. Uh, so I think uh, we have a lot of uh, participants today. I don't take much time, therefore. <laughs> Uh, the first thing I noticed actually when I uh, read this uh, when I was listening to it, you know, this group of monks, when the, the other ascetics asked this question, uh, you know, uh, it was so confusing to uh, these monks. Uh -huh. they, they, didn't, they didn't want to answer that question out, <laughs> <laughs> out, out of ignorance, right? Uh -huh. So I think that is also very important, you know, when we deal with the Dhamma, especially when somebody asks a question, even uh, whenever we have some confusions, you know, yeah. not to make wrong decisions, wrong judgments and understanding, but go to some experts, you know, one who is uh, very well versed in the Dhamma, who has more experience in the Dhamma there. So you may get a good answer, you know, very practical, beneficial answers. That's a very good lesson, I think, uh, to everybody because many people uh, give wrong interpretations to some dhamma and experience uh, mm -hmm. sometimes. And the other thing, according to this sutta, actually I can see Bhante, uh, to know the dhamma, to read the dhamma, to study the dhamma is uh, one thing. And how to use it at the proper time uh, for our benefit, for the benefit of others is another skill. This is a very unique thing to keep in mind, you know. Uh, it doesn't mean that just by knowing a lot of Dhamma, maybe the entire Tipitaka can help you <laughs> along the way. Yeah. Unless, you, unless you don't know how to use it, uh, when to use it. You know, there are, uh, therefore, in the teachings we learn, uh, this is skill, very specially, you know, uh, especially when we learn about different uh, topics in the Dhamma. Uh, even different types of meditations, techniques, you know, they are directly dealing with uh, understanding our own characters even. Not mm -hmm. every meditation technique is going to help everyone, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even some topics uh, in the Dhamma uh, are not going to helpful for some uh, people, depending on their uh, tendencies, their characters, their behaviors, uh, so many factors. Mm. Therefore, I think it's our responsibility uh, and our duty uh, to understand myself better, you know, my problem, my issues, and uh, what I am looking for in these teachings, in this practice, and to look for the correct place in the Dhamma. Mm. For that, we need to learn the Dhamma. Without knowing, uh, without learning the Dhamma, we cannot find any answer. Mm. For, <clears throat> It's our responsibility, uh, like as an example in the teachings, it is explained that mm -hmm. for an angry person who has uh, 
anger issues, they should uh, use the loving kindness meditation technique. And sometimes for people uh, who are disturbed with the sensual pleasures, mm -hmm. you know, the tendencies, it is advised to use the meditation technique of uh, repulsiveness, asubhanusati, like that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, there are different meditation techniques assigned uh, to different characters. So it is our responsibility to deeply investigate, understand our mind, our tendencies, our characters, behaviors, and then uh, get to know what these meditation techniques are, uh, their background, their purpose even. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a very uh, skillful uh, thing uh, to learn how to combine these different teachings, techniques together. You know, especially even in uh, helping others, you know, I have some experience, you know, when some people uh, come with a very disturbed mind, especially mm -hmm. in the counseling area, you know, this comes very handy. To keep in mind, uh, like uh, suppose somebody comes uh, with a panic attack, mm. like a depression uh, kind of situation. If somebody tries to guide them in a way that, okay, come and close your eyes, try to meditate. That can be terrified experience for that person. Mm. It can be dreadful for that person. Because the mental experience situation they are going through can be very disturbing to them. Mm. Uh, so closing uh, his or her eyes can be really grateful for them. So yeah. that's where the real counseling or even the Dhamma which is Sambhu Jang in this case, talk to them, mm. you know, converse with them, guide them in some understanding. Uh, it can be very helpful. And then maybe afterwards you can apply some uh, peaceful meditation techniques like Pasaddi, concentration, things mm. like that. So it, it would be very helpful for us to how this is skill, you know, to know the Dhamma and when to and for what reasons issues to use this Dhamma as medicine. Yeah, one Thank beautiful, you. beautiful. Actually, it, it's so true about Bhante Sankhya. When I had the experience of those days, when I, used to, when I started doing the public speaking and I would receive questions from the audience and I I I I didn't have the right answer, but I said that I had to do more research. That I would get back to uh, my teachers, and and they would uh, refer to some sutras and or some books. And and after reading those uh, sutras and those uh, books, you know, uh, it, we learn, and and then next time we go to do the public speaking or teach, then it, it gives us a lot of. Uh, Energy. We know this stuff. <laughs> we know how to answer the question. That is, I think that is being so humble, right? Some people, teachers, they don't like to say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, maybe, maybe this group of monks, actually, they were newly ordained. They had, they did not have much knowledge yeah. about the Dhamma. Yeah. That's why they got back to the Buddha. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next I see Venerable Sudhammananda. Uh, uh, please, uh, what's in your mind, Venerable? Hopefully, uh, mind is empty. <laughs> soon, soon, yeah. uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respect to the Venerable monks and nuns who are present. Um, a couple of comments. I, I was pleased to see the five hindrances up next to the seven factors of enlightenment um, because I think it's important for people to understand that these hindrances exist and sometimes will prevent us from experiencing these factors. So we have to use this mindfulness, this sati, mm -hmm. to kind of limit the effect and the force of some of these hindrances before we can go further on the factors of enlightenment. So the, that's the first thing. But once we do start down that path, the hindrances dissipate. And so... Um, when when we exercise a lot of mindfulness, it it naturally flows that we investigate phenomena. And when we investigate phenomena, it naturally progresses that we have energy. And when we have energy, it naturally progresses that we feel joy and then rapture in our bodies and minds. And when we feel that rapture, it morphs or progresses into um, this sukha or happiness and ultimately into um, tranquility and then equanimity. 
Um, so the Buddha talks about this process as a progressive one. And there's actually a sutta that says that um, in order to experience piti, while, while experiencing investigation of dhammas, he did not have to intend to experience piti. It happened. And while he was experiencing piti, he did not have to intend to experience the next of the seven factors and so on down the line. So the point is that these things actually happen through our bhavana, through our meditation, and we don't actually have to will them into uh, being, or, or nor can we actually will them into being. You know, there's a certain aspect of meditation where when we get the counterpart sign, um, we can, if we lose a little bit of concentration, we have to go back and start investigating Dhamma. And, but once we're on this path, sitting deeply in, in rapture, if we keep sitting in that rapture, it will naturally progress down the other paths uh, of awakening, uh, maybe not all in one sitting. But so the point is that you, if you have the proper um, faith in the teaching, you don't have to really figure out all of the steps. You don't have to necessarily figure out, well, is this really PT or is this just uh, kind of, you know, the, the joy that comes from, from sitting? Uh, you, you know, you'll know. You'll know when these things occur. They're distinct and changes happen in the mind and the body. And you don't necessarily will them into um, creation. Uh, in fact, by by creating the thought in the mind, the intention, um, it's a hindrance in in and of itself to to the experience. We we have to kind of uh, let go of the thought and just practice the bhavana, the meditation that we're assigned, and um, they will progressively occur. So I, I just want you know people to understand that. You don't have to be confused about trying to evaluate exactly where you are. You know, there is that process when we're investigating Dhamma, you know, Dhamma uh, Vichya, when we're investigating. But these other factors further on down the line happen spontaneously without any willpower on your part. So just do your practice and uh, let it unfold naturally. Mm. Much. Yeah, that is uh, very important. Uh, of course, when you keep practicing, uh, many things will become very clear, right? This, this is the practice. That, that's the very reason I, we see this uh, phrase even in the sutras where Buddha is repeatedly telling the monks and even the other disciples, senior disciples, uh, telling the junior ones, their students, you know, just keep practicing. Even nowadays, we see even our own teachers, you know, say whatever it is, just practice it. But having the knowledge is very important, but the, the perfection comes from the practice. So thank you for emphasizing on that aspect of the teaching. Uh, next, uh, we see Venerable Trudeau from Florida. Uh, what's in your mind, Venerable Trudeau? Uh, you have to unmute. Salutations to all of the most venerable. Can you all hear me just fine? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. I apologize. It's, uh, it's Florida. We have a lot of wind, so the young Florida monk is uh, struggling <laughs> out here. Um, in regards to today's sutta, I think um, after hearing everyone's contribution, I think the key here would be prevention of the five hindrances. Prevention. Mm -hmm. So if we can prevent it in the first place, uh, then, you know, it doesn't have that dependent origination, the length of influence leading to the next to the next, and then we can't really be the antidote to the five hindrances. And the reminder would be to keep the precept for one. And it's funny, before I came out here to the beach at my dad's office, a lot of divorce cases and a lot of um, people just really get all tangled up into their stories and narrative of uh, divorces and how they live very complicated lives and having to remember a lot of lies, which give rise to anger, uh, ill will, which is one of the hindrances. And uh, working a lot of cases that has to do with desires, 
<laughs> so, you know, um, and when we look at doubt, trusting in one's ability, not just lack of conviction for the teachings of the Buddha, but lack of trust in one's ability. And we see that a lot nowadays. And so I think the monastic order, one of our duties is to reinforce and to lead by example and to remind the student to trust in your own two wings when you are the bird on the branch and to you know to have that words of encouragement that these are the teachings that will help you develop these wings strong mighty against the wind of life and the hurricanes of life so um and then when we look at number four, it cannot calm the mind. One has to trace the links of influence as to what leads to one's inability to calm one's mind because of the drama that one has brought to and in one's life. So, you know, just into the details uh, of each individual's life to, I would say, write it out like how I did. <laughs> um, and now, you know, we have all sorts of programs like Monday.com and all of these uh, uh, software out there that helps you for organize their life. And it's like, you can, you can organize, organize your life, which is a pen and a piece of paper, the traditional and old school way. Uh, keyword, the old school way. <laughs> and so I just wanted to um, remind everyone that um, prevention would be key here. Uh, and it clears the way more smoothly, less entanglement, in one's life, less complications. And I think behind me, I might sort of just drag it out since I already have it here. When I went to Laos and Thailand, can you imagine a monk dragging this out on the beach? <laughs> I wonder what my fellow Floridians think. But, um, you know, I think all of us have one of these at the monastery. And when we see an image of a monk sweeping the floor and the sound of this broom, Simplicity. It's just enlightenment is one sweep away. But yet we have to get complicated with our lives so busy that we're buying robots to sweep for us. <laughs> and so when a monk tells us to grab a broom and take the time to sweep, the lawyer in one's head says, I'm too busy to sweep. I don't have time. I have kids. I have to pick them up. I have karate class and so on and so on. I just wanted to contribute that uh, that fact, and uh, I apologize not having additional time to, uh, to add more. I'd like to yield the floor back to the monastic as a uh, uh, whole group of yoga students waiting to uh, practice walking meditation. But thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Venerable Trudeau, for sharing that experience with us. And I would be very, uh, today I see Venerable. Uh, uh, Kusala and Venerable uh, Bikuni Sobana remaining very quiet. Uh, I would like to hear from you as well, but I see Venerable Shanta Sobana raising hand again. Uh, what's in your mind, Venerable Shanta Sobana? So, uh, actually, Venerable, uh, uh, I'm very sorry to tell this uh, because uh, the thing is this that we are discussing the sutras and all over the world, this go and people see this and this is going to be recorded and uh, this is going to be uh, kind of like uh, for a long time. Yeah. So that's why. So when it comes to Buddha's teaching uh, in meditation, it's never taught anywhere that once you start to practice gradually itself, you're going to go to enlightenment. Mm. So moment by moment, you have to have the awareness and you have to practice this. So that's why this all the teachings. It's not uh, that because I see most of time there are some people talk about meditation. Meditation is doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is a, some kind of meditation. But when it comes to the Buddha's teaching and when it comes to tranquility meditation, go towards the inside meditation. And if anybody look for the liberation and you have to do it moment by moment with the awareness, knowingly the very condition of the mind. It is not a gradual path once you come to the mindfulness that our other everything going to happen itself. Mm. It's not going to happen there. Then, then this kind of teaching no need. Because whoever come to mindfulness, then that person always going to have that thing. No, it's always the mind that 
going to depend on the according to the necessary course and conditions in that environment. So we don't know what kind of condition will come in the very next moment. Mm. So that's why uh, when it comes to this sutra or, and even the other sutras, it's very clear. It's not kind of like uh, the method that once you have the mindfulness that other everything going to be there. No, mm. it's always you have to practice moment by moment with the energy, effort and the clear mind. So that practice will give uh, the result. So that is my idea. And I hope if if, if it is wrong, and uh, I think uh, we can go ahead and and <laughs> I, I, that uh, I like to discuss about it. No, the uh, Venerable Shanta Somali, you, you're right. You know, uh, there are a lot of uh, people actually watching this program. Even yesterday, uh, a devotee family uh, came to our temple, and and they and they said their relatives in 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 Australia uh, uh, watch this program, and they love this discussion very much. They look forward to this, and I and I, I want to give a big shout out to those people if they're watching it now. Uh, thank you for watching all the way from Australia. <laughs> um, so I see Venerable Aya Sobana from California after a long time. So what's in it? First, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, thank you, Venerable Sir Spontes. Um, I am very grateful for this group. And uh, uh, Ayata Taloka encouraged me to change my regular weekly schedule in order to be able to uh, again, uh, uh, participate with this study. As to the uh, sutta in question, most of the time, the students who come to us uh, for the weekly meditation program are too much agitated. And so I do put a lot of effort in helping them to calm down first. Uh, but uh, the, the giving the uh, tip about knowing how the mind is going and bringing the right antidote for the state of mind are changing the practice according to the state of mind in order to sustain the meditation is something that the students do appreciate hearing. Uh, right now, I am very much thinking of uh, sati in terms of remembering to be aware of the chattara satipatthana, of the four satipatthanas. And so then, considering that uh, this instruction, especially about the uh, hindrances and the bojangas, is a, related to uh, citta nupasana, being aware of the state of mind, and also related to dhamma nupasana, that those are two of the themes in dhamma nupasana that can be uh, developed and cultivated. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear about the bojangas as being a progressive sequence that uh, leads onwards one to the other. Uh, but this sutta seems to tell us that they may not necessarily need to be practiced progressively in order like that, but they should be practiced skillfully according to what's the right remedy for the state of mind at the time. And um, in this way, it's encouraging the students to be very uh, sensitive to what they actually have to work with at any given moment that they shouldn't just try to do it by the book without trying to pay attention to what's inside. Uh, so that's my thought. Thank you for asking. Yeah, uh, thank you. Venerable Ayya Soban, actually, months are very happy to have your presence. Uh, they're saying it's a great blessing to have you. <laughs> uh, so uh, please, I know you also sent an email to me uh, that you would be uh, joining today's discussion and the future discussions. Uh, please keep joining. Um, okay. and your, your insights are also very, uh, valuable of uh, utmost importance to us. I know people would like to hear, uh, the perspectives, uh, of the, of the bikunis. <laughs> okay. Next we see Bante Kusala raising his hand. Bante Kusala from Boston. What's in your mind? Thank you, Bante. Namami Sangam. It's great to see many monks, uh, and at least one nun joining <laughs> us today. Um, <clears throat> um, I have listened to these beautiful contributions of all the Sangha, 
it's so inspiring to uh, see their perspective of the sutra. And uh, when I received your email about the discussion, um, I was all inspired mm -hmm. because uh, no matter how much practice I have done, no matter how much teachings I have given, a simple sutra like this uh, answers many questions that I have struggled with before in my own practice. Um, I think when Jayasaro said this is like the clear-cut teachings about the practice, and I liked uh, what when Basankitya said about how teachings can be one thing and putting it into practice is another. Mm. And then I remember Bhante Santa Sobana talking about how magnesium and vitamin D are not taken together. And in the same way, sometimes uh, uh, sluggishness, um, you know, sluggishness is to be observed with mindfulness and the remedy also should be discovered with mindfulness. Uh, so I, when I studied the sutra this evening, I kind of categorized the seven factors of awakening mm. into these two parts, restlessness, the uddhatam, udda, and uh, then sluggishness, leaner yeah. uh, nature of the mind. So you can imagine a scale, and in that scale, the center is mindfulness. And uh, on one side is um, three aspects of uh, awakening. And on the other side is another three aspects of awakening. So the balancing factor is mindfulness. I think this was also highlighted. And I like uh, when, uh, when uh, in, in the very beginning, uh, when Rabalananda brought um, the previous sutra, and then the sutra that comes after in this discussion uh, into the table. That is super important and very interesting way to read. And I think this is called intertextuality. Uh, not taking a sutra alone, but trying to place it uh, with the sutra before and sutra after. Mm. So uh, when we do that, um, some pieces that are missing in one teaching can be discovered. Uh, and we can also get inspired with with the with the teachings, and then put it into practice. So I saw uh, the this sutra particularly highlighting what is important, because uh, when I did the categorizations, I did not see a place for mindfulness. But toward the very end, if you are not reading carefully, you will miss the part about mindfulness. Yeah, uh, and. And then you, when you discover that part, then you give that much importance and value to mindfulness. And then you look for, what did the Buddha say about it? Mm -hmm. The Buddha said, Satincha kwahang bhikkave sabbattikang vadami. Uh, mindfulness is needed for all these. So for uh, those who have never looked into the seven factors of awakening, um, I think the way to practice it is given in the next sutra, this is called the Metta Sahagata Sutta, and it's also called the Halidavasara Sutta. In that, um, each of the seven factors of awakening, these are also called uh, seven limbs of awakening, um, seven uh, parts of awakening. So awakening is one, but to get there, uh, like Vedabha Santa Sobhada highlighted, it's it's a gradual practice. Little by little, you get there, get to that uh, realization, and you know that it is happening. So to, to have that goal uh, achieved, we can cultivate uh, also the four sublime states together. That comes in the next sutra. Because sometimes... You can you can uh, do walking meditation to cultivate mindfulness grudgingly also. Uh, and then you realize, no, that's not the way. You need some loving kindness toward yourself. You need some loving kindness toward others. And the practice itself should show that you are enjoying the practice. Uh, you may be sitting for three hours in the day and uh, 
and then uh, you break the practice and that uh, after that you you may tend to speak uh, unpleasantly mm. and that shows that some you know some some friendliness some loving kindness is missing in our own practice mm. so this is when um, the teachings and the practice become so interesting to us mm. um, and and the question um, that came to my mind is, you know, is this answer in the question that should these seven factors of awakening be practiced one after the other, or should they be developed when uh, according to the need? I believe this sutra answers that question, that when you discover sluggishness, then you have a remedy for it. Um, for sluggish mind getting active with analyzing things, can um, can inspire your mind. Um, so uh, this reminds me of this image that I remember from listening to Venerable Ajahn Brahm. He says, um, uh, when they practice together with many monks, they notice uh, monks who are nodding, you know, they, they are sleepy and they just almost fall from the meditation cushion. <laughs> and and then some some monks who are very um, perfect looking in the when you look at them, they are seated perfectly, and um, you can almost you know you can think that they must be having good meditation. But then I was surprised to hear the other part he he shared with us, that those monks who are nodding, who are sluggish, are the ones who end up remaining monks. And those monks who look so serious uh, in their sitting, they quit soon. <laughs> <laughs> they don't end up staying monks. So this was very um, interesting yeah. to me yeah. uh, because you know some some of us um, want to put up that show and you know show that we are perfectly in doing our meditation <laughs> this you know how the ego can drive us in all these directions but then if you are honestly sincerely looking into your practice the practice it, it itself will show whether you are truly enjoying it and doing it the right way because uh, we can, you know, dhamma can we can catch the dhamma like catching a snake with the tail. It can bite us. It may it may be harmful to us. Yes. So if someone is struggling with their practice, I would definitely encourage them to put these two, three sutras together and see if you can change um, anything about your practice um, and see if you get the results sooner. Sometimes, you know, it can take years to get some results. And it took that many years because some of the important pieces of the teaching were gone missing in your own understanding. Because you may hear it, but you may not comprehend it and put it into practice. Because this is, uh, these sutras should be sadhukam manasi karota. Mm. You listen well and comprehend it mm. so that it comes uh, ready and handy to you uh, at the moment you try to begin your practice. So uh, these are um, uh, some things I wanted to share, but I also wanted to highlight that, you know, uh, although it was um, brought up in the earlier, uh, in the discussion, on, on in this discussion earlier, that um, interfaith discussions um, happened, right, like, like at the time of the Buddha, um, I I was wondering about that part. Um, sometimes um, the language of the sutra, the, especially the one after, does not support that friendliness <laughs> in the in the discussions between these monastics. Uh, but it is, of course, encouraging us to engage in uh, interfaith discussions uh, in in a friendly way, and that is why. We do engage in these discussions together. Sometimes us monks also do never get together to discuss Dhamma. That's why this uh, this teach this group is so important that way. And I like that you know we we continue doing it, uh, no matter how many challenges and obstacles and discouragements we may face along the way. But we continue doing it. And today was the best example for how 
e to see how each monk saw the sutra slightly differently from uh, the other. And, and in, in the response that the Buddha gave, um, it says that these paribrajakas, the um, students of other whoever teaches, uh, will not be able to answer when you kind of confront them this way because it's avisayagatang. It's not their area of focus. Mm. So um, I think what I got from that piece is that sometimes they just want to compare. They want to claim that we do what you do, so don't say that you guys are doing something better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, confrontational. But I'm glad that the Buddhist monks here, in this case, they remained silent. And uh, uh, whether they were senior monks or monks who never faced this kind of question, because at the time of the Buddha, there was there were a lot of debates going on. Mm -hmm. uh, some of, Sometimes monks were not encouraged to participate in those debates. Um, and also to... They were they were told not to perform miracles also, mm -hmm. and there were rules against these things. So uh, I think the Buddha was very much aware of these uh, debates going on. Sometimes uh, these other monks coming to confront the Buddhist monks, and the Buddha was kind of giving them confidence by saying, um, "Well, when when you put these seven factors of awakening into practice, you will discover these things, and this is how you can uh, practice them so well. And maybe it is um, good to engage with them in a discussion, so you are ready to answer without having to uh, bring the discussion to to the Buddha. So that is also super interesting." Um, I think the other piece that I will highlight is that the next sutra, the Metta Sahagata Sutra, also highlights um, the four sublime states and their destinations when you practice them with the seven factors of awakening. So you do it in 28 ways, each four practiced with the seven factors of awakening. And when you have done it that way, each of these bring you to beautiful destinations. For example, loving kindness uh, brings you to the beautiful deliverance of the mind. This is called the Subha Vimokha. Mm. And then the compassion brings you to uh, infinite space. So likewise, there's this other very much, in, you know, if, if someone's, if all these go destinations are established, if someone said loving kindness does not take you to Nibbana, I think that answer is also found uh, in the line of yeah. these discussions, especially that these sutras are placed under Sakachavagga, that is the discussion section. Mm -hmm. It may be suggesting that these were the discussions they had those days, or these were the discussions that these monks had with the Buddha and that they are preserved for us to look at, look into, and then apply them into our practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bhante, for this time. No, no, thank you, Bhante Kusala, for highlighting all these uh, aspects of the, uh, the importance uh, uh, of the sutra. And, you know, I, ha I have to uh, uh, confess here that, you know, I, I really uh, love uh, listening to all of you because, you know, I, I, I also read the sutra a couple of times. And after reading the two times that I have chosen this sutra, we need to discuss this one. And then read the third time. And after listening to all of you, you know, how you saw this uh, uh, sutra and how you explained, that gave me more you know, the insights and the more knowledge. And and so uh, uh, now I'm uh, thinking of uh, uh, highlighting these teachings on uh, my monthly retreat coming up, coming Saturday. <laughs> so these teachings are more than enough for this retreat. So I'm very grateful to all of you for helping me with uh, all these insights. Uh, uh, so now, uh, uh, Bhante Kamalasiri, do you have anything to uh, share with us uh, about the sutra. I think uh, <laughs> the everybody uh, explained it is nicely and beautifully. Then the uh, 
So there is no any thing else to explain, but the I, I like to give a little bit in the idea. Yeah. Because the we are monks here and the, we are mostly give the teachings and meditation teachings. Uh, the, the, therefore, it is in, uh, very in, important this sutra because uh, if the until we not understand this sutra, mm -hmm. I think the teaching is Paribrajaka's teaching. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very powerful statement you made. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is the thing happening. The, the same thing happening, you know, the until not understanding Indriya Bhavana Sutta, the all of the Buddhist teachers also teach uh, uh, Parasari's teaching. Yeah. That is the happening. Uh, mm -hmm. Same way, this one also. The, therefore, if we want to be real Buddha's disciples, uh, then so we need to understand this Sutra. Uh, because I know mostly mostly people uh, i have hear that when people are talking about the uh, suggest the most the co common uh, the answer is uh, try to develop your tranquility try to develop your samadhi mm -hmm. work hard for that that is the answer mm -hmm. yeah. you can find so many examples for that in the youtube uh -huh. uh, because of the not understanding this sutra Mm. Uh, so we, we must pay our attention to this sutra. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, they, 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 these concluding remarks <laughs> tell mm. so much about what we do. You know, <laughs> what other mm. monks teach and what they do and how we are doing this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you about the conversation. I think that is that is nature because that. Uh, whatever the Paribrajaka or uh, Ajivaka or Niganto, monks or any meditation practice anywhere, it could be happen yeah. because that is the nature of meditation practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is why we need the Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Buddha is not at least we need his guideline, guidance yeah. no? through these teachings. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you about the commentary. Uh, we had such an amazing discussion today. A lot of stuff. A very enlightening experience. So now I would like to respectfully invite uh, Bhante uh, Nanda from Long Island uh, to recite the Ova the Patamokabosas for us today. And and we missed your, your recitation, your chanting, Bhante, because you have been traveling, you were busy. So after a long time, we are going to... <clears throat> Thank you, Bhante. Sab pa pas akar nang kusalas upasampada Sachit pariyo dap nang etang buddhan saas nang Kanti paramang tapotitik ka nibbanam paramam vadanti buddha nahi pabbajito parup ghati samano hoti parang vethayam to Anupavado Anupagato Pati Mokhe Chasangvaro Matanyuta Chabhattasmin Pantancha Sayanasanam Adhijit Teche ayogo etam buddhan sasanam sadhu sadhu sadhu. So thank you, Bhantinanda, for beautifully reciting this Ovada Patimokka verses for us. 
uh, uh, we all had such an amazing discussion today and I'm very grateful to uh, have your spiritual presence and thank you for sharing your wisdom and insights and knowledge with us and this is such a great meritorious deed. I'm wishing you nothing but all the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. May Devas continue uh, to protect and guard all of you uh, with divine blessings for your health and safety so that you can continue sharing Dhamma more and more with uh, more people who are thirsty and hungry for Dhamma. Sabbe Satta Bhavantu Sukhidatta May all sentient beings be well, happy and peaceful. Uh, with this loving uh, uh, kindness in mind, uh, I would like to wind this up today and I'm hoping to see you all in two weeks time. Until then, be well and good night from Toronto, Canada.